probably seen you all. I'm Sharon Bolt, and I work for the Vice President for Student Affairs, and we are housed in the same area as TRIO, so you've probably passed my desk, and if you thought I'm ignoring you, I'm not really ignoring you, I'm in a different office. It just appears that I'm in your office, so <laughs> I'd like you all to make it today. I know this is a bit of a stressful time for you at this time of the year, finals coming up, so we'll get on with it talking about listening skills. Listening is defined as hearing something with thoughtful attention. Now I know as I walk around the campus, I see a lot of students with their iPods stuck in their ears and they're off in another zone. And you may think of that as listening, but you're not really listening. After a while, that becomes somewhat of white noise. It's just something playing in your head or in your ears, in your head. But it's not, you're probably not really listening to that. Something like the television, after a while, sometimes it becomes white noise. It's just background noise. People talking can become background noise. I don't know how many of you have ever watched any of the Charlie Brown shows. When the adults come on, it's long, 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 <laughs> which tells you Charlie Brown's probably not listening to that. So that's how some of us listen at times. And it's very important to tune in and listen. If you're in a classroom situation and the instructor is talking, you need to internalize that you have come in, sat down, and you intend to listen. The brain needs to be notified that you want to listen. It's not osmosis. It's no different than you going home at night, getting into bed, and putting your textbook under the pillow and saying, I'm going to have this head in my head tomorrow morning when I wake up. <laughs> you have to intend. You have to be paying attention. This cartoon tells us what a lot of people think about hearing and listening, that they are the same thing. They are not the same thing. Hearing is a physical thing. Listening is a mental tension. Why do we listen? Two main reasons is to accomplish tasks and to build relationships. You're always building relationships when you are in a conversation with someone. Sometimes we don't think of that. We're standing in the checkout line at the grocery store, and maybe you're just passing the time of day. The checker says, how are you? And you say, I'm fine. How are you? But you are building a relationship. If you notice, if you frequent the same store a lot, and you get a nice checker, a nice sales associate to work with you, you frequently will go back to that person. You will seek them out. You have built a relationship with them. When you go into class, your instructor, you are building a relationship with that instructor. When you ask your questions, when you speak to them before or after class, when you set up a meeting with them, you are building a relationship. You have to do this to accomplish tasks. If you have a job and the boss says, now this is what I want you to do, and this is how I want you to do it, you're going to have to be listening. Otherwise, you may do it the way you think is correct, but that may not be the way your boss wants it done. So we have to listen to people in order to accomplish what it is we're doing. Sitting in a classroom situation need to be listening to the instructor. What format do they want that paper in? How many spaces between the lines? All of this you need to be listening to. Some examples of bias or topic. You have a history class and the instructor says, we're going to read and study the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. You're sitting here going, Oh, this is just going to be great. I live in the 21st century. I don't live in Rome. Why do I care? <laughs> you have bias about the topic. That will play into 
how well you are going to listen. Your attitude. I'm here for one reason only. It's a required class. I just need to take it, get a decent grade, move on. You already have an attitude about the class. And that's going to block some of your listening skills. You need to go in with an open mind and say, there's something important in this class that I need to learn. And you need to focus on that. Association bias. Maybe you walk in and there's a student there or the instructor, and you look at them and it reminds you of something. You have an association. The instructor looks just like that boss you had at your last job and you couldn't get along with them and you never go back there and work again, and now here they are in the classroom. It's a completely different character, person, but you have built that into your mindset, and you have made a decision based on that. Maybe you have a mindset about the topic or the presenter. This past fall, I was with a group of people, and it was during the last presidential debate. And the TV was on, we were watching a baseball game, and they flipped over to that channel. And as I was sitting there, there was banter going on among the other people in the room. I could have told you instantly that everyone in there was going to vote on the Democratic ticket. That was their mindset. There was nothing that the Republican candidate was saying that they didn't scoff at, fun of, laugh at. They had a mindset. They were not listening. They had already made their decision. And these can be real blocks to listening. Listening fallacies. Now there are a lot of those out there. Hearing and listening are the same thing. That's not true. Hearing is your physical ability to hear the person that is talking, whether it's someone at this distance or someone standing next to you. That is what hearing is. Listening is your intent to focus in on what is being said. Good readers are good listeners. They could be, but that's not necessarily true. Because they are a good reader may mean that they are a visual learner. They need to see the information in print. They are not so much of an audio learner. Hearing it is a challenge for them. But they could be both. Smart people are better listeners. Again, they could be, but that's not necessarily the truth. They, if they read a lot, they have conversations with people, things like that, they could be gleaming information from all kinds of sources. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they are a good listener. Listening improves with age. Well, as I look around this room, I can tell you I'm the oldest one in the room, and my listening skills probably have improved with time but it's because I've learned how to listen. Somewhere along the way, I have picked up tips that will help me with that. So it's not an automatic thing. It's because you learn things. And as you age, your hearing ability could become poorer. So you have to be aware of that. Listening skills are difficult to learn. No, you just need to be informed about them, and you need to know what they are, and you need to practice them. I have a real bone of contention with most educational institutions, because under communications, they will teach multiple speech communication classes. They will talk to you about how to present. But so few of them talk to you about how to listen. And that's equally as important. Some of us may never stand in front of anyone and speak. We may just be mostly 
in our entire life engaged in one-on-one -on -one or small group, but you always need to know how to listen. These are some of the inhibitors that you may or may not have control over. Have you ever sat in a classroom on a spring day where between heating and air conditioning, so the windows are open about a third of the way through the class, the lawnmower goes by the window. That kind of blocks out the noise. Or maybe it is during heating or cooling season and you have a seat near the air conditioning heating system and the fan is quite noisy. So you may have a problem with listening because of that. Room temperature is a big thing. If you walk into a room and you go, oh my gosh, I should have wore my coat. I am so cold. So you're going to sit there and think about how cold you are. How long do you have to sit there in this cold room and everything in your mind is about the cold. It's not about the subject. Again, your hearing ability. If you know you have, then you need to address that by perhaps sitting in the front of the classroom, talking to the instructor, and letting them know that you have this problem. Maybe you can ask if you can record the lecture take it back home and turn up the volume so you don't miss anything. There are ways you can work around that. There are many people who do have a hearing issue. Visual distractions. I'm going to give you an example of what happened to me one time. It's my oldest twin grandson, his grandparents stayed in kindergarten. I was all excited about it, and they were excited because Nana was coming. I went in the classroom, and I sat down on the little bitty chair, and I looked up, and there was stuff all over the walls. There was the alphabet, and there was this thing hanging over here. We were um, monitoring the weather temperatures. And over here was the classroom student of the day, and their picture was over here, and it just went on and on and on. By the time it started, and the kindergarten teacher was talking, it was almost as though there was this voice coming somewhere out of all this busyness. I, I sat there and kept thinking about, how do these kids learn anything? How can they get past all this busyness? So I got completely distracted by the visual, probably list, list, missed most presentation. So some people are bothered by that. Some people aren't. Also, you could walk in and see someone in the class and go, oh gosh, that's a really cute outfit. I wonder where she got that. I wonder if they have any more. And you bounced off and you're all into the clothes thing and you're visually checked out. Internal noise. I am quite sure that everyone in here has a lot of internal noise going on. And you may have it right now. You're thinking about that final, that you really need to do some more study. And oh gosh, how many questions are going to be on it? And your mind is just busy on that, or you're into the holiday things that are going on. Oh, I've got this party to go to. And my mother expects me to be here. Oh, and my boss added more hours to my work week. I don't know how I'm going to do it. And so all this is running around in your head, and you're not listening. You haven't intended in your mind that you are going to come in and leave all that outside the door and really listen. Lack of sleep. Lately, I've heard a lot of reports that we really do not function well under if we have less than seven hours of sleep in the night. And that's hard to get sometimes. If we all get busy with everything going on in our lives and we just kind of check out on the sleep. Well, that's really not a good thing because you need to be rested in order to listen. You need to be in a relaxed state, not a 
oh my gosh, I really need a nap at this moment. Which goes into the mental fog. Lack of sleep can create that. You just you haven't had enough caffeine. Or you're really a morning person. And that's the best time of the day for you. These classes were only offered in the late afternoon. Uh -oh. You sit there and you just have to listen. You really have to work at the listening because it's the wrong time of the day for you. Seating. Now that seems like a very simple thing. I was at a conference not too long ago, and you know the little plastic folding chairs that sometimes you get at wedding receptions? Sat in one of those for eight hours that day. Uh, if your seating isn't comfortable and you have to be there a long time, that can be a real distraction. This is how much of our day we spend in communication, 70% of it. And 55% of it is spent listening. 23 is spent speaking, 13 reading, and 8% writing. When I was growing up, I kept hearing the phrase, you have two ears and one mouth because you listen twice as much as you speak. Well, not quite, but almost. Well, actually, it's not far enough now, I'm sorry. I'm not a math major. So it is, you spend, actually spend more time listening than you do speaking. When they talk about this, again, it's the actual listening. It's not the white noise that goes on. This is the courier listening process, and that's just an acronym up there. If you'll notice, the individual listening filters that we all have that presents themselves as we are listening, what is your role in the scenario? Are you the student or are you the instructor? Are you the employee or the employer? Do you work at the store or are you the customer? What is your attitude at that moment in time? Do you have a good attitude or do you have a bad attitude? Are you going to listen with an open mind or have you already decided? Previous experience will pop in there. Well, I've done this a hundred times and I know what I'm doing. I don't know why they had to change it to do it this way. So, again, you're not listening. You know how it's supposed to be done. Values. We all come into every life experience with our entire background, we drag it along with us. That is part of who we are. So, our values factor in there. Do you value what you're doing? Do you value other people? Do you value the subject matter and how it's being presented? Do you go along with the values that are presented? And again, all your biases will show up. So we have a lot of things going on during listening. It's not just an exchange of words. The process below the hearing, you hear the words, and then you are simultaneously understanding, interpreting, and evaluating. So you're not individually saying, okay, I heard it, now I get it. I think this is what she means. Well, okay, I'll evaluate that. See if, that, see if I go along with that evaluation or that thought process. All that takes place when you're listening. Then you need to remember it. Now that's not rote memorization. That doesn't mean you need to remember every word. And sometimes you will need to remember every word if you're going to have an exam. But just in general life experience, you need to remember the concept, what was being talked about, how it should be taken. If in the conversation, don't understand, 
it's up to you as, as the listener to ask for clarification. Do not make assumptions. They could be completely wrong. Are you interpreting it the way it was presented to you? What did the speaker mean? How you interpret it will go along with life's experiences. How they meant it could be completely different. It's important, very, very, very important when you're listening to ask questions of the person you're, that is, you are speaking with. Again, remembering, you can then remember it better if you have all that going on. You can pull it up when you need to. And that gives you a basis for responding. It's very few times that when you are listening to other people that you don't in some way, shape, or form respond. Now right now, no one in here is speaking to me. I'm the only one speaking. But you're all responding to me. You're either looking, you're nodding, you look puzzled, you smile. Everyone responds. You do respond at all times. And this is important, especially when you are in a one-on-one -on -one conversation or in a small group. It's important to let whomever is speaking to know that you are engaged, you are listening, you do hear, and then respond back in some way, shape, or form. Verbal response is always great. Question. I, I've seen him do it too many times. And 
they're the active listener. That's how they learn. Once I heard this, it was kind of like, oh, I can cut them some slack. They weren't just trying to get the instructor off track or whatever. They really needed that to learn. These are my resources. If anybody ever wants to have them, I'm happy to share them with you. Just stop by my desk on the way to the <laughs>